Hi guys, it's Adam here. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon. Today we're talking about meniscal tears. Now these are one of the most common injuries in the knee, but it's something that creates a lot of confusion. So I wanted to make this video to help answer some of the most common questions I get asked in clinic. Now maybe you've had an MRI scan and been diagnosed with a meniscal tear, or you've seen your doctor and have been told that you need surgery on your meniscus, or you're just curious to find out more. Now to understand how meniscal tears are treated, it's really important to know what the meniscus actually does in a normal knee. So I'm going to start off by explaining the anatomy and function of the meniscus. We'll then move on to the main types of meniscal tear before talking more about the treatment for meniscal tears. I hope you find this video useful and please do remember to hit subscribe for more videos coming up soon. As always, this video is for information purposes only, and you should please speak to your doctor to get individual advice about your condition before making a decision about what to do next. The knee joint is formed between the femur or thigh bone and the tibia or shin bone. The ends of these bones are covered by smooth, glossy cartilage, which allows the knee to move smoothly with very little friction. Because you have a curved surface moving on a relatively flat surface, there's a high contact pressure and it would be nice to have something to distribute the load more evenly and that's exactly what the meniscus does. Here you can see the inner or medial meniscus highlighted in red. The meniscus is a separate structure made of tough fibre cartilage which helps cushion the knee and provides some stability. Now sometimes the meniscus can tear but understanding why it has torn and the type of tear is really important when it comes to thinking about treatment. The first group of people have what we call degenerative meniscal tears. In this x-ray of the knee, you can see how on the outside of the knee, where the green arrow is pointing, there's a gap between the bones. The reason for this gap is that the bones are covered in cartilage, which we can't see on the x-ray. As people develop arthritis, usually due to wear and tear as we get older, the cartilage is worn out and the gap narrows, which is what's happened on the other side of the knee, where the red arrow is pointing. As part of the process of arthritis, the meniscus gets brittle and squashed and is often torn, but you can see that the main underlying problem and reason for this person's pain is their arthritis. Historically, many people with degenerate meniscal tears had a knee arthroscopy or keyhole surgery to wash out the knee and trim the torn bit of meniscus away. However, lots of recent evidence suggests that this is ineffective. Generally speaking, if you have significant knee arthritis and a meniscal tear, arthroscopic surgery won't provide any meaningful improvement and you need to be treated for the arthritis itself, which we'll talk about in a later video. At the other end of the spectrum are people with a relatively healthy knee who have a sudden injury and tear their meniscus. A typical sequence of events is someone goes to the emergency department, has an x-ray which doesn't show a fracture of the bone, and the person then has an MRI scan which confirms a meniscal tear, often in association with other injuries such as an ACL tear. So, if you have a traumatic tear, do you need surgery, when do you need it, and what type of surgery do you need? Well, it depends on a number of factors, and that's why it's really important you see someone who's qualified to manage knee injuries to give you advice on this. Some types of meniscal tear generally need more urgent surgery, for example, if the meniscus is torn and flipped inside the knee, known as a bucket handle tear, preventing you from moving or fully straightening it. The location of the tear and the type of tear are also important, as are other injuries that you have. For example, if you're due to have an ACL reconstruction, the surgeon will look at the meniscus at the same time as this. It's also important to know how long ago the injury was. So, what does meniscal surgery involve? In very broad terms, there are two types of surgery, either meniscal resection or meniscectomy, which is trimming away a torn bit of meniscus, or meniscal repair, when stitches are placed in the meniscus to try and fix it. How do you decide which type of surgery you need? Well, the final decision is usually made in the operating theatre by the surgeon when they've had a chance to actually look at the tear and assess it. But a simple way of thinking of this is a bit like tearing a cloth. If there is a jagged, frayed edge, then there is no point in attempting to repair that cloth because the repair will likely fail which in the case of a meniscal repair 
may require further surgery to remove the stitches which have fallen out. However, if there was a clean cut, then it may be repairable, which is the ideal scenario as the meniscus can then be preserved. We've spoken a lot about the role of surgery, but it's worth remembering that you may not ever require this. Even for traumatic tears, your doctor might recommend a course of physiotherapy to see if this helps settle the symptoms, and often the symptoms will settle and you've avoided the need for surgery. It's also important to realise that there's a huge spectrum of different scenarios and not all meniscal tears are the same as we've looked at here. There are some situations where elderly people with a meniscal tear and some degree of arthritis might benefit from surgery, particularly if they've tried a course of physiotherapy. And equally, there are younger people where meniscal surgery is not appropriate. 